Welcome into another edition of Bama and Bourbon with Aaron Sotos, me athletic. I'm Lance Taylor from the next round where we talk bourbon and we talk Alabama sports. Today, previewing a little Jim Beam Black extra aged bourbon. This is old school for me. I mean, Jim Beam is about as old school as you can get, man. So when I started, uh, this is bad, when I started drinking in high school, my bourbon of choice was the regular Jim Beam. Nothing wrong with that. And then I had a uh, good friend, uh, was working for Future Brands locally, and when the black came out, he was like, you got to try this. Yeah. And so, started to drink the black a little bit, and uh, I'm a big fan. I haven't had it in a while, though. Um, I'm sure it's going to be delicious. They so. once, Jim Beam Black, I think it was the Devil's Cut, once had Mila Kunis as their spokesperson. Yep, they did. Yeah. That was a good spokesperson. Yeah, that was a great spokesperson. <laughs> uh, the premium 86 proof bourbon whiskey spends years longer being aged in the American white oak barrels than the original Jim Beam. So those extra years of aging. Again, Jim Beam Black, it's full body flavor with notes of smooth caramel and warm oak. Yeah, it works. Yeah, that's just fine. Yeah, I'm fine. You know, we talked about, um, you know, Beam for me for, for a long time is I would drink it straight, but at the same time, it was a big mixer for me, too. Yeah. Um, but this is, I mean, either way, I mean, I think I would just probably just drink this on, on ice or, yeah. or neat. Um, okay, we're going to get a couple of things. So as we record today, Alabama's on the road taking on Arkansas tonight, yeah. which should be a fantastic game, but we really can't break that game down because right. we haven't seen it yet. Um, I'm going to start first Alabama-Kentucky, yeah. and then we'll move forward and we'll see what's going on with the uh, Alabama football um, coaching situation as far as the uh, the coordinators. So we'll get into that. Again, Bama and Bourbon is brought to you by the Beverage Place, Pink Package, and Over the Mountain Cruisers. We'll give you more information on those guys in a little bit. Um, I was there Saturday. I don't go to a lot of games. I used to go to a lot of Alabama basketball yeah. games. I don't go to as many as, as much anymore. But I've got a couple of friends that got really good tickets, and so one of them Friday night said, hey, do you want to go? And so I ended up going. And yeah. Were you down there Saturday? I did. I got Much like you, got a late call from Buddy, got an extra ticket. Would you like to go? I'm like, heck yeah. So it was a big game. I thought the crowd was great. It further, though, highlighted to me why Alabama needs a new arena. I just, it's, it's old, it's dark, but given all that, it was a great atmosphere. The fans really showed up. Do you, uh, so, and we had Nate Oates on the show, I'm losing track of days, I think it was Monday, and we didn't ask, he brought it up within five minutes of the interview, Yeah. he basically said we need a new arena. He's like, I don't hate Coleman For, for them, for the players, the practice facility is fantastic, but in terms of game day atmosphere, it's lacking, um, just because it's dark, it's cavernous, you're too far away from the court, um, and I did see that interview with Nate, and I thought he handled it well, and he's got leverage. Look, I mean, there's going to be some jobs going to come open that may already be open, that teams are going to express interest in him. Here's where the rub meets. It's not Greg Burns' fault um, that construction costs went up. He did his due diligence and, and got out of on a path where, you know, eventually, originally they were just going to redo Colton, and then he got him on the path of, we're going to build new. Well, then construction, inflation, all of that, and everyone's got their hand out right now uh, to Rich Boosters. NIL, I mean, it's it's like never before. So get, raising the money is going to be difficult, but they have to get it done. This is a, a very key moment in Alabama basketball history. you got a coach. He's recruiting his tail off. The team's playing their tail off. They won the league. They won the SEC tournament a couple years ago. you got to keep this momentum going. you got to get started on this. Well, not only is he he's a great recruiter, great coach. I mean, there's there's not really a flaw when it comes to Nate Oates. He's a guy that's not going to embarrass your program. Great face for Talks the program. Talks a little shit. I like that about yeah, him. Yeah, absolutely. And, and – now when you get a big job, and not a job that has had a lot of success, but the Texas job with their new arena and yeah. their resources, you know, you do wonder, Chris Del Conte, what direction he's going to go. And I think he's really taking his time right now because he's got his interim, yeah. you know, set there. And so he can take a month or so to figure figure this thing out. Um, Nate Oates will be on my short list. How could he not? He's, uh, he's Look what he's done at Alabama. Alabama – Historically, he's had a good basketball program. When he came in, it was a rebuilding job. Yeah. A complete rebuilding job. And he's done it. And the last couple of coaches, I mean, nice guys in Anthony Grant and Avery Johnson, but just boring, boring, boring basketball. Like watching paint dry. Yeah. I mean, that style. This style is, is more encouraging. And when Alvin has a big game at home, fans show up. But the midweek game, especially with a late tip because of SEC Network, 
you got to have something to bring them in other than that. That's why I think the arena is so important. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and you can tell that Nate Oates really, really wants that. He's being patient. But if other big jobs come calling, uh, it's no telling yeah. what happens there. But back to the game. A um, couple of observations. Kentucky sucks. They're, what are they doing offensively? Uh, they're nothing. Uh, I mean, there's no fluidity None. at all to the offense. They can't shoot. They just Shibway try to get the ball, looks force like, the ball inside. Shibway looks like he's regressed. Well, I mean, and I thought Alabama did a really good job of how they use Bediaco. Yeah. And, 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 you know, got some eye candy in front of him in terms of him not always blocking his shot, but just making it difficult for him. And, and Brandon Miller is, uh, he's the truth, him? man. I mean. And my guy, the guy I've been touting since I first saw him play, I, and I'll be honest, didn't know, didn't know a lick about him before he got to Alabama, Mark Sears. Oh, is incredible. Yeah, I, I, when I saw that he was transferred, I was like, this is exactly what they've needed in the past, a veteran guard. Yeah. And, Only and, a junior. He's got another year left. Yeah, and, he wants to and, and Sears, I mean, he was playing with his hair on fire Saturday. I didn't know what was going on, and I asked Oates about it when we had him on Monday. I was like, you guys are up 30, and, and Sears is crossing the timeline and chunking <laughs> it up. Yeah, within 10 <laughs> seconds of the shot clock. <laughs> I, I don't know what play. Was but, yeah, I mean, and, and then, you know, Quinterly coming off the bench. I mean, they've got really just a, a great rotation, perfect yeah. balance. And when they're not turning the basketball over, they're not going to lose. When they get good guard play, they are incredibly tough to beat. Uh, now, tonight's, I think, a test of this team's maturity because they do rely on so many freshmen, and that's a hostile place to play. But if, if Arkansas goes in with a game plan of we're going to try to limit and take away – Brandon Miller, which is what Kentucky really did in the first half. Brandon had seven at half, and he went crazy in the second half. Then, you know, Clowney. It's Clowney's game. Yeah. You know. So the, the Elite Eight run, I think it was, correct me if I'm wrong, 2004 Four. Yeah. when they lost to UConn. I never believed there were a Final Four team back then. This is the first time that I think I've ever watched Alabama basketball where I believe they can legitimately make a Final Four run. I yeah. think they're that good if they can stay healthy. Yeah, and I, I went back and watched uh, the 2021 SEC tournament game against Tennessee and, and LSU just to kind of compare what that team was. And that was a great team, but they were so heavily reliant upon the three that if they weren't going to hit, it was going to be really d- difficult for them. This ain't Alabama. No. Alabama can win in a variety of ways. They can get inside. They can get to the rim. They can kick and get inside and kick outside and hit the three. They're a really good team. Yeah, and they've got an alpha right now. Oh. And, and Brandon Miller, I mean, he's he's that good. They've got great guard play. So I, I, I totally thought Benny Alco was great. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the best I've ever seen him look. Like offensive and defensive in the same game. And, and you know, a buddy of mine that uh, it, it might have been Dunaway, actually, uh, came down at, at halftime and he was like, they make Kentucky look small. They're so long yeah. and athletic. Yep. And I think that's really what you want is a bunch of 6'8", six, 6'9", six, dudes, and then with really good good, good guard play. So very impressive, yeah. at least until this point, with Alabama basketball. It's Bama and Bourbon where we talk Alabama sports. We drink bourbon. Right now we're trying out the Jim Beam Black Aged Bourbon. 86 proof, uh, spends years longer being aged in those American white oak barrels. Uh, very smooth, full body. Yeah, really, smooth. really like it. Uh, Bam and Bourbon is brought to you by the Beverage Place, located next to PGA Superstore on Highway 280. Pink Package, located across from the Target, next to Arby's on Highway 280. One stop shop for liquor, beer, seltzers, wine, sodas, mixers, cigars, ice, even fresh lemons and limes. They open early, close late, open 9 a.m. every day except Sunday. Go see Chan, Joe, everybody there. We appreciate everything they do. Also brought to you by Over the Mountain Cruisers. We'll give you more information on those guys in a little bit. Alabama football. It's a 365 thing, yeah. and really, college football now has become 365 with yeah. NIL transfer portal. Yeah, it never stops. But you know, the question everybody or all Alabama fans want to know: <laughs> Bill O'Brien, when's he taking <laughs> off? Yeah, and when's he going back to New yeah. England? And um, you know, what's going to happen with Pete Golding? Is Pete Golding going to get another offer? And if he did get another offer, you think it would be one of these mutual decisions or mutual agreements where Pete's like? New scenery, good for me, and Nick Saban at the same time, you know, hey, bring in a new coordinator in, good for us. Man, every every other day I'm hearing a different rumor about Pete Golden. Oh, he's going to Oxford. Oh, he's going to, going to go to visit and, and link back up with Sark at Texas. Hey, he, may, he might go back with Loxley at Maryland. Um, but guys scheduled base salary is 1.6. So he's under contract. There, if nobody wants him, then I would imagine he's going to be back. But I think it's incumbent upon, and I wrote this in, in The Athletic today, if I ask you, heck, Lance, if I even ask you five or six years ago, what's Alabama's identity? 
It's a ferocious defense. That's the first thing you oh, tell yeah. them. Yeah, now yeah. it's, man, they've had some great quarterback play. You've got to have great quarterback play, no doubt. Now, Alabama's had a great run with Jalen and Tua and Mack and now Bryce. So they've had a run. But, but you, you have to have great quarterback play and still have an, a defensive identity. That's what Georgia has. They, that's no what I was about to say. I mean, Georgia yeah, is, and everybody, everybody's talking about Georgia's yeah. the new alpha in college football, and which you can't really deny because yeah. they've won back. But, and I'll say this, and I point this out in the article, even though they're the new alpha and everybody was crowning them, Alabama's still 3-1 against them. No, I get that. In, in the last five years. But my point was going to be, and I think you were getting to this, Georgia is playing like Alabama used to play. Yeah. Yeah. They're playing hungry. They're playing great yeah. defense. And although they don't have a five-star quarterback, he's playing like a five-star He's an efficient playmaker. And that's what you got to have a quarterback. So when people identify Alabama right now as having an offensive identity, because of that, that's fine. But you've got to get that toughness back on defense. And Alabama has not finished in the, in the top five in total defense in college football since Jeremy Pruitt was there in 2017. They finished number one that year. Ever since then, they've only been in the top ten once. So they have got – and they, don't tell me it's the dudes. they got plenty of dudes. Now, do they have as many on the defensive line like uh, of the caliber of Dalvin and Jonathan? Probably not. But they had Quentin Williams in 2018, and that defense was okay. Uh, they have got to get back to dominating on defense. And Kirby Smart said this, and I think it resonates with Alabama fans. We do the hunting. We're not hunting. And when's the last time when the game was on the line that Alabama defense had to have a stop, they were hunting rather than being hunted? Because A&M went right down on the field. Yeah, they didn't it, score. It, it's been a while. Ole Miss went right down the field. LSU went right down the field. And this is the biggest thing to me that points out something's got to change. You can Because Alabama was a decent defense this year. They were 13th nationally. But this, this one thing I'm about to give you highlights, they have to have a change. Auburn was a bad football team. Auburn was a one-dimensional offense. And Auburn ran for over 7.4 yards per carry and 318 yards. In Bryant Denny. Something's got to change. Okay, so back to Jeremy Pruitt, though. He brought up that name. Yeah. So Greg Sankey went on record, I think it was last week, and talked about the hires of Hugh Freeze yeah. uh, to, to Auburn, talked about the hire of Bobby Petrino to Texas yeah. A&M, said, look, I didn't have to, you know, that was A&M's on Bobby Petrino. The Hugh Freeze thing was different, and I think he had to get it somewhat involved. I forgot exactly yeah. what it was. But if Jeremy Pruitt was to come back to the SEC, how yeah. much does Sankey get involved? Um, do you think it's greenlit if no. somebody wanted him to come back? I think there are people within, and I don't think, I know there are people within Alabama that would like to have Jeremy back. I know. In your personal opinion, I think you and I have talked about this. Of all the defensive coordinators, Jeremy including Pruitt. Kirby Smart, Jeremy Pruitt. you think Pruitt was the best? I do. Um, I think he's. And, and I've listen, talked to people it, that would agree with you. I think it's close. But they never said third and Jeremy. Yeah. It was third and Kirby. And I think that's just that just highlights the aggressiveness between each coach. Now, Kirby may have changed since then. But um, I think Jeremy Pruitt wants to come back. I think there are people within Alabama that would like to have him back. Now, when Hugh Freeze got hired in his introductory press conference at Auburn, you know, there was that rumor a few years ago, really more than a rumor, that Alabama was trying to bring Hugh Freeze in as offensive coordinator. You remember that? Yeah. And the thought process was, well, he wasn't. Alabama sort of got talked out of it, or the SEC blocked it. The SEC can't block it, but they can strongly advise against it. Um, there's a case going on. I don't know that too many people know about. Lance Thompson's suing the SEC. Oh, I did not know that. Because he, he is alleging that he has been blocked from coming back to multiple stops. And so the SEC is saying, or Hugh Freeze said, well, I was never, that was never blocked. I don't know what the SEC's position on it. I would imagine if Nick Saban called Greg Sankey, Greg Sankey would say, Probably not the best look to have one of the coaches that's still under investigation when he was head coach at Tennessee come back to the program. But Alabama absolutely can say he's not been convicted yep. of anything. We're going to hire him and then see how it let it play out. But, you know, Nick Saban is sort of a, a rule follower in that regard. So I don't know how it's going to play out. But Jeremy Pruitt wants to come back. I can tell you that. It's Bama and Bourbon with Aaron Sotos from The Athletic. Make sure you subscribe to him. Uh, only a buck ninety nine. What are you working on right now? Well, I just dropped the uh, the story today about explaining some of the facts that I talked about. About there's changes needed on the defense, whether Pete Golden comes back or not. They've got to do something differently. Um, later in the week, I'm, I'm probably going to tackle another. The thing we talked about earlier is I, I think Alabama has to, in some regard, has to start making forward progress on a new arena. Uh, I think it's incumbent upon the leadership and the boosters. I know it's difficult when everyone's coming out wanting money for NIL and all this other stuff. Football is always going to come first, but it's a critical time in this basketball program's history. You got a good thing, 
if you kind of want to keep it, so I'll be working on a column on that. Aaron Suttles from The Athletic. He's got his finger on the pulse. Make sure you download that app and make sure you subscribe. It's only a buck ninety-nine. Bama and Bourbon is brought to you by Over the Mountain Cruisers, Southeast Hub for the Toyota Land Cruiser. Nearly 10 years of experience servicing and outfitting Land Cruisers, OTM Cruisers. They've got the skills and knowledge to service and pre-qualify any Toyota Land Cruiser or Lexus four-wheel drive and quickly address your needs. Go to otmcruisers.com for more information. Again, we always talk a different bourbon, and we are talking about the uh, Jim Beam Black. I do like it a yeah. lot. It's, it's this just sad on like on a Wednesday. I really could just yeah. sit down and I could drink this I for the next couple of hours. I could drink and just get wasted on this. So people still believe that Bill O'Brien is going to ultimately go back yeah. to Foxborough and take this job with Bill Belichick, who's coming back, by the way, for his 24th season. Um, if that does happen, leading candidates right now, in your opinion, to become the next offensive yeah. coordinator in Tuscaloosa? I mean, my DMs are full of that same question, and I got, I'm not being coy. There, I've, heard, I've heard a little talk about the defensive coordinator. I've heard absolutely zero still on the offensive coordinator. Somebody even said, hey, what if, would it surprise you if Bill O'Brien came back and was sort of like a coach in waiting to do the interim, not a long-term coach, but the interim between Saban and the next guy. And I just, I uh, mean, this, and, and that's not coming from can like- Can you imagine what Bama fans oh, would they, do? They, 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 they'd go crazy. Now this is not someone speculating that's gonna happen. They just kind of threw it up as, hey, let's talk about this. But um, I still think he's, go I think he's gonna go. I think. Listen, he's got an ego, too. Yeah. And he's been an NFL he, head coach. He, and he's he hears college. all this, yeah, too. he hears that. And, and not only that, but, listen, coaching for Nick Saban will, can wear on you. And when you're coming in and, and, and Nick Saban's kind of dogging you out and you've got your own ego, how much of that can you take? And so I think if Bill's got options, Bill will explore those options. You know, I, an interesting name that we heard this week because he was fired on Monday, and I I don't get it. Is Cliff Kingsbury? Watch out, industry. We're gonna have a, a another, <laughs> yeah another Playboy uh, offensive. Yeah, th out this now. one truly is single. Um, do you believe Kingsbury? I mean, I, I, I don't I, think it would be the worst idea. The one thing, uh, you know, obviously, I I don't think it'd be the worst idea. I don't think it's absolutely a slam dunk either. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, traditionally, what Alabama's had outside of maybe Loxley. And, and maybe Sark to some degree is they haven't asked the offensive coordinator to do a lot of heavy recruiting. Now, Sark got, uh, he's the reason that Bryce is at Alabama, no doubt. That's Sarkeesian. And, and Loxley is a great recruiter, but Lane's an okay recruiter, but he's not top shelf. Um, so that would fit because I don't know how much Cliff Kingsbury can recruit in, in this new world, but he's the name that's out there. I think, hey, how much cold water has been thrown on, on Garrett Riley? I was about to bring him up. Look, not the best lasting look. <laughs> but, you know, before that game, I heard that, that Kirby Smart was talking about when they were scouting for Cincinnati, I think it was in the Sugar Bowl or Cotton Bowl a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. when they won on that last second field goal. He said the one thing that jumped out watching Cincinnati on film was Tulsa and how Garrett Riley was running that offense yeah. and how unique and how different it was. And so he said he was extremely, you know, impressed by that. You just wonder... If Garrett Riley, I mean, the name helps, but I mean, they were an offense that averaged 41 points this yeah. year. It didn't look good against Georgia. Not a lot. Of, a lot of people don't look good against Georgia. Yeah. Uh, do you think Garrett Riley's a, a, a I, potential? I think he's a name you look at, but if I'm Garrett Riley, I have to think about, yes, going to Alabama is going to raise my profile. Yep. Um, but do I absolutely have to have it to be a head coach? Probably not. Probably not. Like after the season he's had. I didn't finish great, but his name's on people's list now. And so if your goal is to be a head coach, maybe you do come in for one season at Alabama, be Nick Saban's coordinator. You're going to get exponentially more coverage than you do at TCU. And so more money. Maybe. Yeah, and more money. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Suttles from The Athletic. Again, download uh, their app. Make sure you subscribe to that. It's only a buck ninety-nine. Bama and Bourbon always brought to you by the Beverage Place and Pink Package and our friends at Over the Mountain Cruisers. They uh, can uh, service and uh, pre-qualify any Toyota Land Cruiser or an Alexis four-wheel drive. Quickly address your needs, otmcruisers.com. Okay, so we're, we're fans of this, right? I like it. I like it a lot. We're, we're going to send you with a bottle. I'm going to take a bottle. And we leave a bottle. It's the way we do it here on Bama and Bourbon. So we'll be back next week. We'll be talking more Alabama basketball. Who knows? By then we could have new coordinators, one or two, right? Yeah, well, hopefully because... This is dragging. We say it's dragging on, but they got two guys in place. So that's is, true. They do have one opening. That's where Charles Kelly, he went to Colorado. So they have one opening. So what's going on with that situation? 
I, I, it's been quiet, man. Yeah. So I, I'm waiting to hear like everyone. Else. In fact, someone that I trust sent me a message today, man, that said this coaching, and they said coaching search has been as quiet as they can ever remember. And I'm like, well, there's not that many searches right now. I think Nick Saban is taking his time with this one. It's going to be interesting, though, Michigan, if Harbaugh does go to the NFL, the domino effect from the Michigan job, who yeah. takes that job, yeah. you know, how many – how many things uh, come up from that? Uh, again, it's Bam and Bourbon uh, right here on uh, Double Down Media. The next round, make sure you tell your friends. If you like bourbon, you like Alabama sports, you're going to love this. Make sure you tell everybody, like, subscribe. We're there in Sotos from The Athletic. I'm Lance Taylor. Have a great week. We'll see you next week.